Thanks to Headley for that great overview presentation as one of our keynotes. And next up, we have got Investigator Resources and Andrew McElwain, who is the Managing Director, uh, a very large silver project down in South Australia, uh, here to tell us an investor update about what's happening with Investigator. Please welcome Andrew McElwain. Thank you very much, Kerry, and thanks for that introduction uh, about silver. And uh, I'd like to talk about, and as you see there, Australia's highest grade silver project. But people will quite often ask, well, what are the points of difference? And I suppose uh, today, for the attendees of this conference, we've got two. Uh, the first is, is, this is the only silver story you'll hear about today. And as I keep saying, it's the highest grade silver project in Australia. The, um, the uh, second point of difference, as I said, is the grade. And uh, I'll refer to that a number of times. So if I can just move through the presentation. Obviously, the normal disclaimer, you can read that online. Thank you. And um, this page just covers really the key points of what I'd like to talk to you about Investigator. Uh, a picture tells a thousand words and on the right hand side, you can see that we, uh, our share price in blue and the silver price in Australian dollars in grey. And we're an absolute pinpoint mimic for uh, the silver pr price. And, as uh, listeners will uh, appreciate, silver uh, peaked at uh, $40 an ounce in Australian dollars last week. And you can see our share price uh, match that where we are uh, trading about five cents, but uh, tipped over six cents uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, listed on the Australian Stock Exchange as IVR, we also have some options trading IVR OA. Um, we uh, have the Paris Silver Project, which as Kerry mentioned, is in South Australia. It's 100% owned by, by Investigator, a 43 million ounce silver resource, a dual compliant resource that was restated in 2017. And quite a significant regional exploration potential within uh, the shadow of the Paris deposit. And I'll talk about that in some detail. We've spent some time looking for some uh, high, high value, low cost uh, um, precious metals opportunities in Australia. Uh, we still have a number of those on the back burner at the moment, but our focus is very much on driving the Paris project forward. And that's being done by a very experienced and capable board. Um, quick cap uh, corporate snapshot. Um, uh, we have about a billion shares out. Uh, we just recently undertook a, a placement in a two tranche uh, placement to raise $8 million. Uh, we, as I mentioned, we have a couple of hundred million options which expire at the end of the year. They're in the money. They uh, currently trade one to two cents and uh, a number of uh, our option holders have started to exercise those options. A number of uh, unlisted options and performance rights that are associated with the employee share plan. Um, as I mentioned, a share price of 5.2, been up to over six cents more recent days, market cap in excess of $50 million, and $8 million cash in the bank at the moment. Uh, we have a shareholder meeting in September where the second tranche of that placement will be uh, ratified, and there'll be an additional $2.5 million coming in, so uh, over $10 million cash in September. Our largest shareholder is the Merion Gold and Silver Fund out of the UK. Uh, they'll take up all of that uh, second tranche and after that they'll be about a 16% shareholder. Quite a large spread of shareholders and we'll be undertaking an unmarketable parcel buyback in the future. I mentioned the board, uh, two geologists and a mining engineer on the board, Kevin and Andrew Shearer, are both geologists, I'm a mining engineer. Uh, we've been in the small end of the resources sector and uh, in the financing game for uh, the best part of 20 and 30 years. So, uh, quite a, quite a, uh, an, uh, an established and uh, experienced board. Um, on the left there, you can see the share price um, rocketed up more recently as the Australian silver price uh, moved up to $40. We have tenements both in South Australia, the map on the top uh, right, and we also have uh, a tenement we picked up recently in Tasmania on the, on the bottom right. The Paris Silver Project sits here where my curse is circling. Uh, Kimber is on the air highway as you go to uh, Perth from Adelaide, about five and a half hours drive from Adelaide up the air highway and across here to Paris. We also have some Stuart Shelf tenements and some tenements out to the west that I'll uh, mention later as well. The Silver Project uh, at Paris is, is, uh, is a mainstay uh, at today's price of around $38 an ounce. We have about $1.6 billion worth of silver metal in the ground. Um, it's all within 10 metres of uh, the, uh, sorry, within 120 metres of the, uh, of the surface, a 10 million tonne 
flat-lying, relatively shallow wall, but easily mined. About 80% of that we believe we'll be able to rip and dig rather than having to drill and blast. One of the most important parts of our, this project is every time it's drilled and we gain confidence in the resource, the grade improves and the overall ounces improve. And you can see that step up from the maiden resource in 2013, where there was, <coughs> excuse me, about an additional 60 percent ounce added to the ounces for 33 million ounces in 2015. Excuse me. <coughs> and then the last resource that was uh, was stated was in 2017 following a uh, an infill drill program uh, and that lifted uh, the grade and tons uh, up and the total ounces came up by 26 percent. What we focus on is this improvement in grade and you can see from the 2015 inferred resource to the combined inferred and indicator resource in 2017, we lifted the grade from 113 to 139. But importantly, the, the inferred grade in this resource is 163 grams per tonne. So we put 60 grams per tonne on that inferred grade with some additional drilling. And I'll talk about the program we have going forward where we are targeting that uplift again. Scoping study has been completed on tech mess, met test work, uh, flow sheet designs put together, geotech works completed. So we're uh, moving on uh, well down the path to PFS. Uh, silver leach recoveries vary between 65 and 89%. And we'll be targeting that uh, component uh, which has the lower leach recovery in the PFS study that we're undertaking now. Um, on the right hand side, you can see a plan of uh, the conceptual pit. That's in grey around here. The blue material is the inferred resource material and the red is the uh, indicated resource material. Importantly, focusing on this patch in the middle, which we affectionately call the 200 metre zone, it's about 200 metres wide. You can see the density of drilling that was done here in 2016 and that's what lifted the resource uh, from uh, inferred to including some indicated, but importantly had that grade uplift from 113 to 169 in the inferred material. Uh, we've, with the funds we've raised more recently, uh, we're going back to start to inf complete the infill drilling and you can see these yellow dots here, which are the collars for the infill. And what we're doing is we're targeting these areas which are still the inferred material and particularly down here in the uh, southern end of the pit. A little bit shallower here, some good grades and uh, we intend through this drill program to be able to convert the inferred material here in blue and certainly the inferred material here in blue into the indicated resource. Um, relatively straightforward open pit, there's some geotech opportunities where we believe we'll be able to steepen up the walls of the pit, lower the strip ratio and obviously that'll improve our, uh, our operating costs. As we run forward we'll do some uh, investigative work and some designs on the power and water supply uh, and also final economic evaluation leading to the declaration of PFS uh, sometime uh, early next year, uh, probably in, the, in leading into the second quarter. Picture tells a thousand words and this is the, uh, the project uh, when it was drilled in 2016 um, and it keeps saying the highest grade project in Australia but importantly you can see the uh, landscape we operate in there it's uh, very sparse pastoral land. Uh, we have a great relationship with the traditional owners and the pastoral holders in the area. And uh, access to the region is, is very simple. Um, uh, unfortunately, no, no power and, and no, uh, no mains water to there. So a couple of those issues that we're looking at during the PFS. But from the point of view of impediments to development, we don't expect that there's going to be any environmental social issues which will uh, be a challenge to developing this project. Regionally, I mentioned there's some opportunities and, uh, and in the past, the drilling at Par and in the Paris tenement has been focused on the resource. You can see here, this is the Paris tenement, uh, Paris pit outline in pink. Uh, the Peter Lumbo tenement is the boundary out here on the tenement in which Paris resides. And we still have some other targets and some untested within the region of Paris, as I mentioned. Uh, and one of the things we'll be focusing on is this Argos trend out here to the northwest. And importantly, uh, there's been no drilling on this trend. And the reason for that was there was a heritage boundary just here where you can see this line of holes didn't progress any further northwest. Uh, we have a heritage clearance now for this area and we'll be able to move out and target this Argos trend. Uh, we also have a couple of other areas, Xanthos, which is close to the northern end of the Paris pit, we think is a fault offset. 
uh, Helen out to uh, the east, had some drilling um, and as you can see a great intersection there, seven metres at 531 grams silver at the bottom of the hole. It was still in low grade mineralisation when the hole finished. And unfortunately, the program there wasn't, uh, wasn't continued because the focus was back on, on Paris. Um, as I mentioned, the Argos uh, trend, and this uh, shows now the magnetics as well. Um, Paris sits down here to the south. Uh, there's some, been some holes drilled here. This was the heritage boundary where we uh, run able to drill past. You can see that line of holes here. So we have uh, three kilometres of strike of this trend here that we'll be doing this regional program. So uh, in the infill program, we'll drill about 5,000 metres within Paris and we'll drill 6,000 metres regionally targeting some of these satellite opportunities. Some uh, reasonable grades in the area and even interestingly and uniquely a small uh, gold intersection, which is quite unusual for, uh, for this uh, setting. Other tenements we hold in South Australia, I mentioned earlier in the Stewart Shelf here, uh, we had this package uh, recently under a joint venture with Oz Minerals. We drilled the Mas Maslins project here in the Watata tenement. And we're looking at uh, what we can do with these tenements uh, collectively with some other holders there targeting um, sediment hosted copper, Zambian style copper uh, mineralisation here. Uh, and there'll be some news I expect uh, in the not too distant future on that package. Um, out here to the east near Broken Hill on the border, we have a package of tenements around uh, Kernamona. Um, some challenging access issues there, but uh, we've done some early reconnaissance work and we're working through uh, getting, getting access to do some further exploration work. Well, recently, uh, following the success of Western Area's nickel discovery out here in the Fowler, we uh, picked some available land here. This is in uh, ELA or application status. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, inform investors uh, as to what the outcome of that is in due course. In Tasmania, we uh, took uh, a bit of an uh, innovative approach using artificial intelligence or neurologic targeting. Uh, we engaged a group and asked them to look at all the available data that's had across the west coast of Tasmania. Obviously, a highly minerally uh, mineral endowed uh, part of the world with uh, renaissantine, rosemary, zinc, henty, gold, Mount Lyle copper mines in the district. And the AI targeting came up with a raging target in the White Spur area here. Uh, this ground was available, so we in fact pegged this ground. It's uh, immediately uh, west of the Henty mine and south of Rosebury and the historic uh, Hercules uh, operations as well. Interestingly, there's a, a historical drill hole here with some thallium intersections and thallium is a well-known vector to zinc mineralisation and certainly what's been able to sustain life at uh, Rosebury. Just in a summary, as I mentioned, the board has a significant experience right through the spectrum from project identification, financing and operation. So we have that skill set which can take Paris forward. We are looking at other alternatives. Uh, we, we would hope to have diversification in our portfolio, but our focus primarily is on the Paris Silver Project. Um, importantly, the team on the ground uh, based out of Adelaide have been with the project for many years. They have that project no knowledge and importantly, relationship with everyone we come in contact with in South Australia. Um, interestingly to note at this stage, there are no restrictions uh, under the COVID challenges for uh, our, our people traveling in South Australia. We'll be able to drill uh, the project using a South Australian based driller. So we uh, don't expect any impediments to uh, moving forward with our plan at Paris. I talked about the regional targets and we're looking for Paris 2.0 to see if we can, uh, we can add to the Paris mine life. Uh, but certainly our opportunity here is focusing on uh, value out of this Paris silver project. We're doing that in a rising silver priced environment. We've seen silver move far more quickly and further than gold prices moved. And I keep saying we're the highest uh, primary grade silver project in Australia. Um, we keep a, a watching brief on the uh, gold silver ratio and this uh, tells a, a thousand tales or a little bit of the history back here, an average of around about 65-ish. More recently it ran away to 125. That's when uh, silver price was uh, really in the doldrums and then more recently, and this is only in the space of the last three months, uh, this silver ratio has come off to uh, about 70 odd. Uh, whilst it sits there and uh, mimics gold, uh, we're very comfortable with the silver price north of $35 an ounce uh, Australian. I always talk about Australian dollar denominated costs because everything we buy and sell will be in A dollars. 
and uh, as I had said historically, anything over $30 silver was great for us. And uh, whilst we see silver gaining on gold, um, this is the only silver story you'll hear today. And as I said, we've got the highest grade project uh, in, in the country. So thank you very much for your attention. Andrew, thank you for that. If you can stop screen sharing, I'll bring you and <clears throat> bring us both back on screen. A um, couple of questions that, that have come in. Um, first of all, <laughs> you've recently, and like you, I've, I've got a croaky voice. Um, you've recently raised $8 million. Um, where, where are you going to put that money? Because you mentioned you're going to drill 5,000 uh, metres at Paris and 6,000 regionally, but your focus is Paris. So is the bulk of that raising going to go on bringing Paris uh, into a position where you can start to add value and get on with the job? Or are you looking at regional as well? Um, well, whoever asked it, great question. And thanks for that, Kerry. Um, just to correct, uh, we're drilling 15,000 metres within the Paris resource to improve the, our confidence in that grade, and then 6,000 regionally. So over 20,000 metres drilled. That program is going to cost us around about $3 million. Um, when we went out to raise money, we went looking for somewhere between 3 to $5 million and the interest in the silver market was just out of this world. Um, we got offered, and everyone talks about how many times they were oversubscribed, but uh, look, uh, we got offered over $20 million and we uh, had principal support from our major shareholder in Merriam. And of the $8 million that we ended up settling, uh, they took 50% of that. And uh, they wanted to get back into the stock. They hadn't been invested, hadn't been participating in the last couple of uh, placements because we had taken our focus away from Paris while the price was uh, languishing, the, the silver price was languishing. Now that we're back on the Paris train, they're uh, happy to be on board. And we have some other cash, which allows us to have actually a clear runway to move into the DFS studies as well. So at the end of the PFS, we won't be scratching around looking for money to continue this project. We have uh, a seamless opportunity to drive this forward uh, in this current price environment. Refreshing to hear. I'm really happy when I hear companies, you know, and you say, you know, you could have got the 20 million, but <clears throat> you've gone out to market and you've got the funds that you need to take it to the next step. So let's just end with this why are you are the only uh, silver project at the conference today we know the silver price is strong at the moment and let's hope it continues that way but why should investors especially those watching because the majority of them are investors and i know in the audience today we have a number of people that are very keen on silver but why investigator why now i know you say you've got the highest silver project in australia but why should they sit up and, uh, and, and seriously take a serious look at uh, your company? Well, I apologise for, uh, for um, missing that somebody else was presenting a silver project at the conference today. But, no, uh, no, no, you're uh, the only one. You're the only one. Uh, oh, sorry, I thought you said there was someone else. I apologise. Absolutely not. You're it. <laughs> oh, there you go. So, as I said, the point of difference is we are the only one and also the highest grade. But... Um, I said what we have is uh, a news flow that will flow be for the balance of this year through our drilling. Um, that'll also be that will be reporting uh, the intersections within the resource. But uh, ex more importantly and excitedly for us is also being able to add to that with some regional exploration, which, as I said, there's targets there that haven't been touched for for good reasons in the past, and we've been able to open up that opportunity. So. News flow moving through, not only on the drilling front, but we'll also be starting to look at uh, pit designs and recovery, met recoveries and things like that. Um, as I said, we've always been on the hunt for something else. Uh, we're very pragmatic and prudent about how we spend our money. Um, there are some other opportunities and maybe we'll bring some, something to the table, but focus at Paris, there'll be news flow at Paris for uh, the foreseeable future. And as I said, we won't be going back to the market to raise money to keep the news coming. Andrew McElwain, Managing Director, Investigator Resources. Thanks for joining us on the conference today and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the Zoom room at the end of today. Thank you, Kerry, and thanks to all the listeners for tuning in today. Appreciate it.